In this video I will compare this XFI Surround 5.1 Pro Sound Blaster USB sound card on uh, the Softrock Ensemble. And I have two of them. One is modified on the receive side uh, and the other is in its original shape. I have updated the driver to the latest by March 22, 2017, and these are the numbers. This is what I see when I open the device for 96 kilohertz sampling. It isn't sampling as I want, it's sampling at some probably 48 kilohertz. I have to open the sound control thing, right click on the loudspeaker here and click on recording devices. Well, there are other ways to reaching this. Uh, and line in, mic in, sound blaster and properties, advanced and indeed two channel 16 bit. That's not what I want. I want Two channel 24 bit 96 kilohertz like that apply okay close it and then I try Linrad again and now it looks okay but it doesn't look very good there are many interference uh, lines here but I will check what the performance is uh, I see a margin of 4 dB almost and that is with minus 18 dBm on 14 MHz. This is the point uh, where the soft rock is nearly saturated. So I need a little bit more gain and I turn it up here and as you can see Uh, this could be a reasonable point. Now saturation is at, well, like that, at uh, minus 18 dBm I have saturation. So I switch off the signal generator and look at the noise floor. At first I calibrate the S meter to show the correct signal level minus 18 dBm uh, and that is with a filter bandwidth of 1 kilohertz and you can see that on the frequency readout this is one side 159.15 and the other side 158.15 so this is a uh, 1 kilohertz bandwidth and then with the signal generator switched off and there are some spurs within the passband but they are so many so it's hard to avoid them I click on some other frequency and try to find somewhere where there are not so many spurs or where the spurs are weak well uh, not so easy, but the spurs are not dominating, so uh, you can look at the noise floor here. Uh, what I see is minus 125 uh, dBm, and I read it a little bit more, minus 125.2. Well, uh, so that means that the noise floor of this unit with this sound card is minus 125 uh, sorry minus 155 dBm per Hertz because it's one kilohertz bandwidth the sign errors on sound cards is very common uh, for this particular one there is an article on the internet uh, on this internet address and it shows some modifications that are easy to do add a big capacitor here and 
add another one here. Uh, I will try that. I have now added 1000 microfarads across C100 and when I remove it you can see the difference. So this is significant in reducing these spurs. 100 microfarads parallel to C40 makes a very small difference uh, right at the center. I remove that capacitor now and it takes a little time but you can see the noise increases a little bit here but I don't think that is very significant because the noise all the way around here is much more of a problem. Now what I see is not really the sound card. I disconnect the mains power, sorry the 12 volts from the soft rock and you can see all the noise goes away. So uh, this unit seems very interesting. I have now 100 microfarads in parallel with C40 and I remove that capacitor and you can see indeed there is a lot uh, unpleasant stuff very close to DC. Now with the modifications and still 18 minus 18 dBm with the S meter showing minus 18 dBm uh, switch off the signal generator to get the noise floor and there are still some little spurs uh, but the noise floor is in the order of let's see minus 124 0.7 that is minus 154.7 dBm per hertz for a noise figure very close to 20 dB and if I disconnect the soft rock then as you can see the noise floor is a lot of spurs and the level is minus 129 so there is probably scope for improving this unit further but uh, I don't know how to do that the signal is still minus 18 dBm and I have the S meter showing the proper level but when I switch off the signal generator now, the noise floor is much lower, as you can see. Uh, the reason is that the power supply is now floating. So there is no ground lobe through the minus of the power supply. Uh, I don't have this capacitor now. And this is the screen and I connect that like this. And you can see the noise goes down. It's not a big difference, but 1 dB perhaps. And on some frequency that is here, the difference is much bigger. The noise floor now is minus 127.8. Once more. Well, minus 128 uh, dBm. And that is minus 158 dBc per hertz. That's quite good. I'm now running minus 9 dBm. And that's into the modified unit, which has lower gain in the op amps. Uh, and the S meter shows the appropriate level that I have and I switch off the generator and here is the noise floor uh,
minus 122 uh, dBm, minus 152 dBc per hertz. So the noise floor is a bit higher, but saturation is 9 dB higher. So the dynamic range is a bit better. But I have to look at reciprocal mixing because that could be a problem. This is a low noise crystal oscillator and I connect it through an attenuator to the soft rock. And I have set the switches to get minus 9 dBm. And now I step the frequency by 20 kilohertz. 10, 20. Uh, to look at the noise floor that is reciprocal mixing. And the noise floor I see now is minus 121 and a half. And if I switch off the oscillator, you can see the difference is very small. So this card doesn't suffer from reciprocal mixing. You can see a little of it, but at 20 kilohertz it is very little. And Probably it comes from the SI570 of the soft rock. This is from an earlier part of this video. As you can see, I had to set the uh, level, the input level, to 77 uh, for the soft rock to saturate at minus 18 dBm. Uh, but now, I have to set it to 52 uh, and if I go above this uh, it saturates. The difference is that when I disconnect now the soft rock the noise floor no longer has a lot of small spurs. It's flat and I don't know the reason I haven't changed anything, but I have rebooted and I had to reselect the device because it came up with another number. And if I go up here now without any signal, I don't see these spurs, I just see normal noise. The gain is unstable. I don't know for certain that it's because of the sound card, but I think so. I haven't seen this before on the soft rock. Anyway, now I have set the uh, line in, make in, control to 58 and calibrated for 18 dBm and the margin is 0.2 dB and I'm running uh, minus 18 dBm on the signal generator and look for the noise floor. And this is with the original uh, soft rock, no modifications on it. And I look for the noise floor. Hmm? And I read now minus 128. And then disconnect the cable from the soft rock here, just as I did before. And then there were spurs. Now I don't see any spurs. Well, extremely weak ones. And the level is minus 132.6. I have now changed from the MME drivers to Port Audio uh, with the WAS API, uh, hoping that this would be better. But what I see is the opposite. 
in the sound card test mode I can see clearly now I get only 16 bit and most of them are zero all the time and then there are a little bit of noise so uh, this driver does not work this is Windows 10 and I have installed directly from the CD that came with the box I have to set some different gain level and I'm running uh, minus 9 dBm on the modified soft rock and the S meter shows minus 8.96 well that's close enough to minus 9 so I switch off the signal generator and look for the noise floor it was minus 122 dBm before under Windows 7 This reading out levels has a bug that I have not yet fixed. But after a few tries it will work. Now I read minus 123.3. That's 1.3 dB better than I had under Windows 7. I have no idea what this is caused by. but. It seems to me that this card is more sophisticated than uh, one can get an idea about from the interface in Windows. I tried also Linux and in Linux the card is completely useless. Uh, it runs as a 16-bit only and there are no controls to use from ALSA in Linux.